right, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Riverside TV studios for the Friday night pep rally. My name is Pep Fernandez. Jeff Gorham by my side as well. And uh, Dennis Pope, local sports Ooh. writer, hanging out in the middle, Jeff. Hey, we brought him. You know what? We got him out of this cage. We brought him down to the studio. And he is here, and he's ready to write. Now, listen, we got highlights from 13 different games, as many scores as we could cram into this show. We're going to start with Ramona versus King. And, Pope, you were at that game tonight, I was. Right? I was there. It was not a good look for Ramona. Yeah, we thought that that game, at least going in, I thought that was going to be a super competitive game because the Rams have actually, you know, maybe surprised some people, I guess, early on this season, Jeff. Oh, I'll tell you what. They're my favorite, uh, favorite team in the world. They have Valenzuela. Uh, the little bitty uh, quarterback. Mendoza. Royce yeah. Mendoza. Oh, yeah. Oh. Acosta, the quarterback. Acosta. Yeah, yeah. And then you have Sincere Tolbert. But I want to know if he was sincerely any good tonight. That's the question. Well, it was a lot of King in this one. Let's go to the highlights, everybody. King and Ramona. Here come the Rams flying the red, white, and blue as they head out to the field. And uh, it's going to be a lot of King early on in this one. The Rams will find themselves in a big hole early on. That's going to be Sam Green. Had himself a ball game, number 15 for the Wolves. Goes in for the first score of the game. Makes it 7-2 zip. So now the Rams already in an uphill battle against King. And here comes an interception by the Wolves. That's Robert George. So the Wolves get the football back and in pretty good position as well. And it's going to be Green again. What a great catch. And that's 14 zip. Uh, and King already starting to pile it on here, Jeff. Here goes another touchdown. This one, Kias Furha. You guys watch the Furha family on YouTube? I do. We had a live interview with the Furha family that's at right, a JW West. North game. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And remember, Bob Green would play at Cal. His son is the, the great Green that's playing for Martin Luther King. Look at that. Okay, so that was Jake Valenzuela, one of the few highlights early on in this game for Ram High. And then look at this. The interception here by Riker Galvin. And he's going to go back. It was almost 100 yards. Maybe it was 99. It was right there on the doorstep. Nobody is going to get Galvin all the way. Just trots in for the touchdown. 28 nothing at that point. King rolls as they beat Ramona by 20 tonight. 34-14 the final score. So, Jeff, we got Dennis Pope here. He was covering the game tonight. Uh, Pope, what was your impression here as, as King did a little bit of everything? Some nice offense, some big-time plays on defense yeah, as well. Yeah, defensively, very impressive. They really put pressure on Ramona, uh, really dominated both lines, both defensively and offensively. Uh, it really made Ramona look like a junior varsity team up against King tonight. Uh, Ramona did some really, really good things late in the game against Kaiser to win that game last week, and it seemed like tonight they just were slow to get going. Coach said it himself, we need to find ways to get going earlier. Uh, in the fourth quarter, they did find some success up against uh, King's you know, second string, mm -hmm. but too little, too late. It was already 34 nothing at that point. Ramona just looked outmatched, especially on the lines. And Jeremiah Costa, he's still learning. Only his third game as a varsity starter. Right, so there's a lot of work for him to do. Not a whole lot of time to do it. Uh, Sincere Tolbert, he is getting stronger every week. I agree with you. He is exciting to watch his growth so far this season. He's going to be an outstanding player for Ramona, but they're just not there yet. Jake Valenzuela is a first team all area receiver, I think. Yeah. Uh, very talented guy, but Acosta can't get him the ball with enough consistency to uh, open up other things for other players in the offense. And so they struggle, and Acosta just isn't experienced enough to make it happen on his own. He got caught a couple times, happy feet, uh, misreading some coverages and throwing the ball long into a defense that just picked him off a couple of times early on and really changed the game. So it was tough from the start for Ramona, big hole to try and climb out of, and it just didn't happen. And then on the flip side, real quick, with, with King, I mean, pretty impressive bounce back game. They played a very tough Roosevelt team, you know, the, for their first game of the year. So to see hit them bounce back and get a pretty decisive win uh, against Ram High kind of makes you feel good about the Wolves now going forward. Yeah, I think Coach McMains was a little impressed by his team himself. He said we put the real the two weeks that they had a bye in week yeah. one after losing to Roosevelt really badly in week zero, um, put the bye week to good use, really had – the team buckled down and do the hard work the last two weeks to get better, and it showed tonight. Sam Green, I think he, he's a player um, on any team in the Big Eight. Um, he can play tight end. He can play linebacker. He's physical and fast. Um, he, he makes King a, a better version of themselves. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I think he is the, the difference maker for this team this season. Uh, on both sides of the ball, if he can stay healthy, they can go uh, perhaps a little bit farther than they did last season. Uh, but just tonight, it looked like they were on fire. You know, they, were, they came out ready to play. And Ramona, you know, coming off the high of last week maybe, weren't expecting such a difficult opponent. Last time they played King two seasons ago, they, they handed it to him pretty well. And so it, it was just a, a lopsided beginning, and it got worse uh, 34 nothing at a certain point, right? And it's yeah. just, it, you, it was clear, right, that King was a better team today. Yeah, yeah 18, you know, you were placing 18 starters. Yeah, that's good. Uh, cool. And 27 uh, seniors from that team last year at Ramona. But like I said, you're going to have inconsistencies because they are young. They haven't played very much. Yep. You know, it was always Nate Johnson. It was always Bo Bruins. Yeah. It were, those were your guys. Jake Valenzuela was great to, at points last year, but he got hurt. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, this is going to take some uh, growing pains for this Ramona team to yeah, get you, back into you it. You lose Nate Johnson. You lose Bo Bruins. Any team is yeah. going to suffer from that, too, all area guys. Bo Bruins has been around the, the Rams program for four years. Right, he's an all-timer. Yes, yeah. you know it's very hard to replace that immediately. Sincere Tolbert trying to do it, the job, and I think he can get there, um, you know, by sometime next year and be that kind of guy. But the, tonight, they just didn't have the energy. And I think, gentlemen, the rain before the game tonight put everybody like on their heels a little bit. In here, here in Riverside, we got quite a downpour, and all of a sudden everybody was questioning what mm -hmm. was going to happen with the game start. And so I think there was a little bit of issue with that as well. I don't know how that carries over across the games tonight, but I know for the game this evening at Ramona, a lot of people didn't show up that were going to show up because of the rain. But a huge, huge win for Jason McMains. Mm -hmm. And like we said, I picked uh, King to be the second best team in the city of Riverside to start this season. Wasn't too sure after that loss to uh, Roosevelt, but they hung with Roosevelt for the first half. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, it was the train of, of uh, the, the dog bite, Coach Chastain, mm -hmm. just kind of took over the, the entire game. But I'll tell you, King's going to be very good. Uh, I think Nordavis is still going to be good. And I think Ramona, to an extent, is going to be up and down, but they'll be good come week seven, week eight. Yeah, I agree with that. I think those are the top three teams in the city of Riverside. And real quick, uh, Pope, before we let you go, when you look at the River Valley League, you know, we all, the consensus is, you know, Nordavis is pretty stacked. They're going to have a really good team. But, man, that battle for second place, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. We've seen Arlington win a couple games now in a row. <coughs> Arlington, Hillcrest, Hillcrest, I know it's a tough one. We're going to get to that one in, in a little bit later in the show. But Hillcrest, um, who, oh, Ramona. Pa Patriots still out there, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, I think well. that battle, I don't want to crown yeah, Nova yeah, yet, but that battle for second yeah. and third is going to be fun. And remember, Arlington uh, took care of Polly. And that was yeah, a big win yeah, that's for him. Right. That yeah, was, was last week. Uh, the first win for, you know, at Arlington High School. It was a great win for them. But, yeah, it's just been a lot of teams getting upsets. And it's, it's going to be a fun year, yeah. to say the least. All right, Pope. So, uh, Ramona versus King, where can people find the story that you worked on tonight? Uh, on the Press Enterprise social media first. Uh, then it'll, it will be in print either tomorrow or for Saturday or Sunday, depending on their size and space of the sections of the paper. Um, I don't have anything to do with that, right? <laughs> uh, I just write the story. Um, but you can follow me on Twitter, at Dennis Pope, um, on Instagram, at, on the same handle. Um, and then, you know, all my soccer work, too, and you're going to have me back during soccer season. Oh, well, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can find Pope all season long on the football beat here in the city of Riverside. Uh, Dennis Pope, everybody. We really appreciate it, Dennis. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right, let's go on to the next game. J.W. North taking on Chino Hills. Let's check out those highlights. And, Jeff, it was a long night for the Huskies. The J.W. North Huskies, not the yes. Chino Hills Huskies. Yeah, they're both Huskies. So I was watching, which, where are they playing? Obviously, they're playing at, is that third in Chicago? It's third in Chicago. That's Nolan Ellison, actually a former Roosevelt quarterback, scoring there for Chino Hills, seven zip. And then a, a field goal here for J.W. North, a lot of Vipulu, a Vipulu kicking yes, it that's through. His, that's his niece. Making it 7-3. to three. How cool is that? And then it's going to be more from Chino Hills. Jalen Thompson Delgado, the score makes it 13-3. to three. They add a field goal here. It's Corona. I think it was the extra point actually there. And then it's going to be Cameron Bateman for Chino Hills. Great grab in the end zone. 20 to 3. Here comes the extra point, making it 21 to 3. And you can see that lead continuing to build, build, build for Chino Hills in this game. This time going to the end zone. And that's going to be Bo Baker. Or actually, Bear Baker. I'm Bear sorry. Baker. Bear Baker. Uh, there's another bear. We've got a couple yeah, bears got Bear in the Bachmeyer, area. Bear Baker. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then uh, J.W. North trying to go downfield. The interception here by Chino Hills, and uh, Chino Hills would go on to win this one by final score of 36 to three. So a tough night for J.W. North. All right, moving right along, uh, Riverside Poly, Jeff, taking on Sultana. This game went down to the wire. It was back and forth. And I, I honestly, you have the latest update, so I'm not going to steal do. your thunder. But it was it wasn't complete before we started the show. They were still playing. Well, I'll tell you what. They almost put up 100 points. That tells you how, a little bit about this game. Riverside Poly, who has not scored a ton this season, comes out and they put up a big number. But would it be enough? There's the kick from Poly to go up three nothing to start the ball game. And then it was all sent to Sultana. LaMason Waller with the catch going in for the score. And they go up 6-3 to three over Riverside Poly. Then LaMason Waller one more time in that corner to put the score up 13-3. to three. And more for Poly. Just, just Sean Thomas runs in to score with the score of 13-9. Then it goes back to, you get it. La Mason Waller, he scores his third touchdown of that first half, and there's a lot more to go from that young man. Then the interception by Riverside Polly. Jeremiah Luna goes to the bank and scores big as Polly goes down 23 to 20. Then it's more La Mason Waller. Waller deep in the end zone, over the shoulder is good. And it just gets keep continuing on. Cameron Ortega with another score for Sul the Sultans of Sultana. And then a TD from Cameron Ortega. Or I'm sorry, to Sean Thomas for his second score. And that would do it for the highlights. But the game wouldn't end here. They, uh, Sultana wins at 48-47 in overtime. Polly did not connect on a two-point conversion. Polly goes down to defeat, but a huge, huge offensive input from this Bear offense. So that's final right there, 48-47? That is Oh, it. my gosh. Yeah, because we were wondering. You know, first, obviously, we were concerned about the player that was injured in the game, but, you know, we, we went live with the show not knowing if Polly had won yet because they were still playing. It literally ended while we were doing these highlights. Um, they had an injury. The player hurt his neck. Hopefully, he's okay. They stopped the game for about 20 minutes. They gave him three minutes of uh, warm-up time just to get the last playoff and not enough for the Bears as they go down to defeat. Ooh, that's a tough one. All right, uh, moving on. Let's take uh, check out Notre Dame taking on Linfield Christian. Let's Pontius go out Pilot. to San Bernardino Valley College. Yeah, Coach Ponte is one of our favorite Love guys here. Guy. And, uh, man, it was a long night for Notre Dame. In fact, some of our local teams, man, it was a, it was a rough night for some of our local Look schools. Look at that. Look at that guy. Deshaun Burns. Burns. That's our homie, Coach I Burns at Linfield Coach Christian. Uh, they built a big lead in the first half, and they just would not give Notre Dame anything on offense. Uh, trying to go downfield, and here comes an interception by Dylan Kane and the return here for the Lions. Notre Dame just having a hard time on offense, and Linfield Christian would do enough on offense, and that defense really can't to play against the Titans. Uh, check out special teams here. Linfield Christian punting. Check out this punt, Jeff. You can't even do this any better in the NFL, man. All Whoa. the way down to the doorstep. That would put Notre Dame in a very tough spot, pinned up near their own goal line. And then this happened. It's going to be Ben Shin, the pick six. I mean, jump the route. There he was, right in the end zone. Yeah, how do you jump the route in the end zone, like you said? What's his name? Ben Shin. Ben Shin. I love Ben Shin. And uh, Linfield Christian goes on to the big win against Notre Dame tonight out there at SBVC. And 52-0 uh, the final score. So Notre Dame still trying to get their first win of the season. All right, uh, we're going to see Notre Dame against Xavier Prep. And, and then, the, then they're going to play uh, Aquinas, too. Aquinas is what? down the road in the Holy War. That's the coming Holy up in, War. I think, two weeks, I, two or three weeks. I held that shield. It was one of the most – you know, I felt power when I held that shield – in fact, it was at Harupa Valley a couple of years ago. What was it doing at Harupa Valley? It was the only place they could play, but I got to hold the shield and nothing better than the Holy War. So Aquinas, Notre Dame, looking forward to that one. Aquinas stumbled a little bit. Maybe Notre Dame has a shot. That could be competitive. We'll see. Uh, Aquinas playing out on the road at Xavier Prep out in Palm Desert, and there was some wacky weather out there in the desert in the Coachella Valley. Let's go to the highlights. There's the Falcons coming out in those icy white road uniforms. Oh, oh yeah, there was that. rain. Lots and lots of rain. 
I know we think of the desert being dry that's a typhoon. and hot. It was a haboob. They oh, have wait, haboobs whoa, 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 whoa. out in the desert. A it's, it's rainy, it's windy, and uh, and it was wild out there. I pulled my haboob. I've never heard of a haboob. <laughs> yes. Aquinas, uh, they always, always play great defense. Nice stop there against Xavier Prep. There's JoJo Solis. Literally everyone trying to chase Solis. Xavier Prep gets him here. Uh, and there was hardly any scoring in the first half. In fact, there was only one touchdown. We'll get to that in just a moment. It did come from Aquinas. Here, the quarterback, number nine, Charlie Reyes, takes off on the run. Big run by Reyes to the doorstep. And uh, Aquinas would capitalize. They would punch it in. It's going to be champ. Brown, the Champ. freshman. Champ Brown goes in for a touchdown. In fact, I met Champ at a football camp over the final in that one. So again, uh, coming up for Notre Dame, they're going to have Xavier Prep and Aquinas in those parochial uh, rivalry games here in the Ooh. area. Now, and, and are they going to be playing under a haboob? Is that what it's called? Really? A haboob out in the desert. Oh, yeah. Uh, never heard of They're that. out there. I think you're making that up. <laughs> Don't believe you. I've been in several of them. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the game tonight, Jeff, on Riverside oh. TV. You had the game. I watched it live here in the studio. Oh. I could not believe the way it unfolded between Hillcrest and Grand Terrace. Hillcrest could be 3-0 and very easily, but they start came into tonight 0-2. What would happen? I'll tell you what. A lot happened on Riverside TV as we were at Norte Vista High School, the home of Hillcrest. And here's the first play. That is a the, the number 11 and that is Daryl McGuire. He had two touchdowns, and he also had a two-point conversion. Here's a great pass from the quarterback, Alvarado, Christian Alvarado, to the wide receiver, number 11, Nicholas Shaw. He goes all the way in for the touchdown, and here is their stunt. The great running back for uh, Grand Terrace, uh, Xavier Oliver. Oliver had a uh, couple touchdowns. And oh, special teams issues right there. Hillcrest jumps on this ball. Hey, it was a close game in the first half, and there was no scoring. Second half, it continued to, to blaze. And here goes number 21, Burnett. And then number 11, one more time, Daryl McGuire with his second touchdown of the game. But look at this, 90 yards as they go as Matthew Ramos goes all the way in for the score. He's really fast. Yes. Really, really, really fast. Really fast came in, and it was a scoring barrage as the big tight end, the big fella, Aiden Parks, goes in for the score with 356 to go, and that was a big touchdown. Here's the quarterback, number five, Stewart. Stewart goes all the way in and scores that touchdown as he comes up a little limp. Had to sit out that play in the next play. Here's the backup quarterback, number five, Stewart, to number 30, Xavier Oliver, and he would go all the way. He had himself a magnificent game, and then it came down to Oliver. He took three, four hits, goes in and scores that touchdown. It's a close game. Here goes the big fella from Hillcrest in the lateral that would end the game. And Hillcrest goes down 36 to 35 to Grand Terrace. Like I said, Hillcrest could very easily be 3-0, but they've been snake bit three weeks in a row. Okay, Jeff, I'm trying to process what we just saw because, again, I was in the studio. I saw oh. the end. So, so Hillcrest was up by, like, two scores, right? Yes. Grand Terrace came back to take the lead. They score on a two-point conversion to take a one-point lead. And then Hillcrest got the ball back, drove down, it, and then that lateral interception yeah, is how but it... I'll tell you what, it was it was the Xavier Oliver show. He was phenomenal. Take a listen. That guy, his name is going to be around this area for a while. Xavier Oliver, he had two touchdowns, a two-point conversion, and he did it all, especially in the second half, to carry this team. Not everyone gets an invite to the Inland Sports Show, but Xavier Oliver was actually on the show a couple weeks to, to preview the season, and, so he, he's big a, time. He's big time. And what a great young man. We talked yeah. to him after the game and just so polite and, and gave all the praise to his teammates and his coaching staff, so great young man and a great win for Grand Terrace. Man, yeah, crazy game here on Riverside TV. All right, uh, next up, one of the hottest teams actually
section of the Inland Empire, and they kind of called me out because they said, where's the respect for the Ike mob? We're you talking mean, about Eisenhower. Is Ronnie Lott still playing for him? <laughs> it's Ronnie Lott Stadium, though. It is Ronnie Lott Stadium. Here come the Eagles as they were taking on Palm Springs. Eisenhower trying to go to 3-0 and on the season. Early on, Daniel Ruiz, the quarterback to Jacoby Pointer Caldwell. Eagles on the move. This time, Ruiz to Marcus Brown. Nice uh, yak, the yards after the catch by Brown. Up the sideline. I thought he was going to take it to the house. Pushed out of bounds nice, here. Nice uniforms, too. Look I know. The, the Oregon Ducks of the IE, right? Oh, I love it. That's what I think units? so. Next, that'll be a poll question. Who has the best uniforms in the area? Eisenhower will be in the conversation here. Uh, trying to get a touchdown, but Palm Springs, the Indians, turning them away with some big defensive plays to keep the Eagles out of the end zone. This sack on fourth down by Palm Springs would turn the Eagles away with no points coming up empty on that drive. So now we join uh, Palm Springs on offense and uh, big number 77. He's not listed on the roster, but look at this. He should have had an interception right there. And he drops oh. it. He could have had a house call. He knows it, too. He should have had that one. So the Eagles go back on offense, and uh, they would capitalize at the end of this drive. It's going to be Ruiz to Brown again. That's a big-time combination between those two. So same drive, and uh, it's going. And now in the second quarter, Ruiz to Deshaun Benton. The catch crosses across the field, makes a couple guys miss, and Benton finds the paint. Eisenhower goes on to defeat Palm Springs by a final score of 28 to 7. So Eisenhower 3 and 0. There's not a lot of teams that are 3 and 0 right now in our area. Respect the Ike Mob, Jeff. Okay. Please. I am going to respect the Ike Mob, and I'm going to tell you this. Eisenhower, where's my camera? Eisenhower, where are you? <laughs> you go undefeated this season. Uh -oh. I'm going to do one thing just for you guys. What is it? I'm going to cut the tip of my finger off. Oh, my gosh. That's just serious. Like, just like Ronnie Lott did. Is that what Ronnie Lott Ronnie did? Lott cut his own finger off when he was playing football, and I'm going to cut my finger off. That I'm sounds. Gonna, I, I'm going to pick the finger. I don't need. <laughs> I'm going to pick my pinky because it's little. So if I cut my finger off, Eisenhower, you go tear no, you can have my finger. Somebody can wear it on your uh -oh. neck. I got like a necklace. I got to look. <laughs> That's awful. I, I got to look at where they're playing next week. We, oh. can, we can't let this drag on all, all season if they oh, keep going undefeated. I, this, I am telling you, I'll give you my finger. You go undefeated, <laughs> you get the finger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hit the uh, pep rally scoreboard for the first time tonight. We got a bunch of scores we're going to run through and more highlights uh, as well after that. Uh, let's start. I think the first score is CSDR, California School for the Deaf no! Riverside, taking on Avalon. Oh, Jeff. Oh. Uh, did not go well for the Cubs. 70 to 6 out there on Catalina Island. Um, yeah, that is the final score. That's, that's, well, a, that's a real score. You know what happens? They spent the night early, and I heard Bison. They had a uh, Buffalo chasing, chasing the CSDR. That's when you hop in your golf cart. Yeah, get away. they were chasing around. They got tired, so they got beat, uh, <laughs> they got beat by Avalon. Pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, we're going to run through these scores pretty quickly. Aquinas, uh, the game you just saw, 24-7 against Xavier Prep. Uh, we had Citrus Valley against Silverado. Nice win for the Blackhawks up there in the high desert, 35-8 to eight for Kerb Rook and the guys. Redlands East Valley. Yeah. Hey, Rev is 2-1, and one, Jeff. Big win against Mobile, 38-20. to 20. What do they have a new that? stadium, too? The new stadium. Gavin Pichot is doing a great job Pichot. out there. Pichot. Yeah. For show. For show. For show. Some. Tiago, 0-3, our what? good buddy Bert Esposito. He's got a very young team. They took their lumps tonight against San Juan Hills, 50-6 to uh, the final score yeah. in that one. Corona getting the win. Another win, 30-27 to to uh, against Monte Vista tonight. Hey, I saw their flag football team. Oh, he got to go. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Sure. Marietta Mesa and Valencia. Uh, Rams still looking for their first win of the season after falling 20-14, to the final in that one. Vista Marietta and Orange Vista. We're going to let the cat out of the bag. We're going to have the, the highlights, the end of this game in just a moment. But Vista Marietta winning 34-31 in the final seconds of this game. Broncos improved to 3-0. Oaks Christian all over Roosevelt, 50 to 14. Roosevelt's really good, so that must mean Oaks Christian is really, does, really good. Does Joe Montana's son still play for Oaks Christian? No, he did it. I covered when he. That was a long time ago. Uh, Nate Montana, I believe, yes. was his name. Uh, Great Oak and Fallbrook. It's a, it's a shutout tonight for the Wolfpack. 34 zip the final there. Temesco Canyon and Temecula Valley. Golden Bears act. Still pretty good, Jeff. That's a good Temescal team. So Temecula Valley picking up a very nice win. 37-0 the final in that one. 
Paloma Valley and Kaiser. Jeff, you got some stats. Uh, 38. Oh, that's that's not that's the right not score. That's not the right score. Uh, Kaiser guy, won. Our guy Billy Cardosi is going to be really, really upset. Oh, yeah. He's going to text us in just a moment. Coach, uh, it, I think it was just reversed. I think it was 38-14. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Billy. But, yeah, uh, 146 yards, four touchdowns for their – Kyle Shine. Kyle Shine and uh, two rushes for 10 yards. Number three and a couple uh, touchdowns. I don't know. Billy Cardoso, sending me a bunch right, of other let, stuff. All right, let's move on. He's yeah, going yeah, okay, to blow go. up our phones in yeah. just a second. Kaiser won, everybody. Uh, Bloomington over Rubido, 40 to 24. Uh, the final. There. Are the Bruins are 2 and 0? Oh. They are. Uh, Beckman beats Cardinal City USA, 28 to 7. Uh, let's see. I think we got one more. Cathedral City blanking Pacific, 37 nothing. The final. Pirates still trying to set sail on their first win of the year. So Jeff, here's the deal. We're going to take a one. Uh, let's see, one minute. A quick commercial break. Two minutes. When we come back here, we've got highlights, I think, from like six or seven more games. More games. And more scores to get to. We've got, let's see, uh, we got Rancho Verde. we got Yucaipa. We've got La Sierra. We've got Arlington. And that wild finish between Orange Vista and Vista uh, Marietta. Can I, you wait? I can't wait. I can't wait. I hope I'm ready. Uh, we'll be right back here on your favorite show, the Friday Night Pep Rally on Riverside TV. The City of Riverside Public Works Department wants you to know how holidays affect your trash service. Trash pickup will not be available during major holidays and collection times will be adjusted in response. Residents with City Trash Service will see the following adjustments. For Monday holidays, your Monday collection will happen on Tuesday and Tuesday collections will occur on Wednesdays. For Thursday holidays, Thursday service will occur on Friday and Friday service on Saturday. For Friday holidays your Friday service will occur on Saturday. Residents served by outside vendors will experience a one-day delay of service for each day after any holiday taking place Monday through Friday. And for more information about trash services, recycling, or bulky items, visit the Public Works website at riversideca.gov slash publicworks. The City of Riverside Public Works Department provides high-quality trash and recycling services for our customers. Convenient curbside trash collection services promote a clean and healthy Riverside. To help us provide you with top-quality service, we ask you to follow a few key rules. When placing your trash containers for pickup, please observe the following. Place each container with at least 3 feet separation from each other and at least 6 feet from obstructions such as parked cars, fire hydrants, mailboxes, and trees. Your bin should be placed at the curb no later than 5.30 a.m. on your collection day with the arrow on the lid pointed toward the street to ensure your bins get empty. If you are experiencing issues with your trash collection or perhaps need a replacement for a damaged trash bin, please contact our customer service call center by using the 311 app or website or by dialing 951-826-5311 to reach one of our customer service representatives. And for more information about trash services, recycling, or bulky items, visit the Public Works website at riversideca.gov slash publicworks. We are back here at Riverside TV for the Friday night pep rally. We got more scores, more highlights. We got text messages coming in hot right now, including uh, the whole Kaiser Cats coaching staff. Well, I, I have, they're watching. <clears throat> but yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a thing here. Uh -oh. Hey, Kaiser co football coaches, stop calling me during the show. <laughs> Give me your address. I'll go over there and uh, I'm gonna stomp on you guys. <laughs> Uh, don't stop. They calling. won 32 to 13, yeah. right? They yeah. won 32 yeah. to 13. Yeah, whatever. Just stop calling me during the show, guy. <laughs> I'm coming to your house afterwards, Billy Cardosi. I'm going to take your I'm take all your food out of your house. 
<laughs> Hit him where it hurts, right? Yeah, I know he likes food. <laughs> All right, uh, the highlights roll on. Jeff, we're going to plow through this. And uh, Orange Vista against Vista Murrieta was obviously one of the top games in the area. Uh, it was on our on Teen Vision TV 16, our friends over there. Here is the end of the game, tied at 31 with just seconds left. Vista Murrieta hustles onto the field. They're going to attempt the game-winning field goal. Let's see where the ball spotted, about the 30. Six, so it's about a 46-yard field goal. And uh, watch this, roughing the kicker. And on top of that, there was also, what was that, a personal foul on yes, the Orange on Vista the... sideline? So, hurry, because we're going to get to yeah, the game winning yeah, kick. I, I imagine, yeah, it's, it was, yeah. There, was two, there was two definite uh, penalties. I am watching this for the first time myself. I heard uh, the guys over at uh, Team Vision told me the story. Yeah, our good buddy Tim Hatch yeah. was over there. He's okay, so so oh, there Matty was Matty Ariano right there. Yeah, that's your guy. That's your guy. Okay, so they miss from 46. Now they get to try it from oh, it was about 29 yards. Yes, about 29 yards, and it's good with four seconds left as Vista Marietta improves the three and zero. 34-31 the final score. They did, I mean, they're celebrating like they won, but they did have to kick off, but it was over. 34-31 the final. Coley Candale again? He's doing it, man. Man, he's the he's best. He's doing it. Hey, I, I tell you what, he and his wife are, are, are movie stars. You look at both those guys, they're amazing. Really? Like but like, you were the one in, in the Riverside uh, magazine. Like, you're the movie star around here. Oh, yeah, because I'm handsome. Because <laughs> I'm handsome and I'm photogenic. That's yeah. the only reason. Yeah, well, you got you had a big photo shoot I did. and everything. I did. If you're looking at me in the Riverside Magazine, I will sign it for you yeah. <laughs> in, in, in ink, and maybe I'll even take a picture with you oh. if I decide to. Man. Oh, maybe. Big time maybe. star here in Riverside. Oh, yeah. wow. I'm huge. I'm huge. <laughs> He's kind of a big deal. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next highlights. Uh, we've got Arlington taking on Lakeside. This was a Thursday night special. Let's take you down Ooh. there to... Uh, the Elsinore area for Lakeside and Arlington. Great Lakeside game. with the ball first. Uh, they got a pretty good quarterback, number 17, Jordan Caver, uh, as the Lancers were moving the ball to midfield. And then it's going to be a screen pass as we go back with the Lions this time. Makai Thompson, big run there to about the 50-yard line. Still no score in this game, though. The delayed handoff, it's Akili Thomas. Jeff, I think we're going to say Akili Thomas's name a lot this year. I'll tell you what, he was great last week. In that victory over Polly. How about this, Jeff? From Mike, 58 yeah. yards. Javi. Javi Moreno. It's your guy. Man, I love kickers. That is a world. I mean, that is like national record. Yeah. 58 yards for uh, Arlington. Javi Moreno, three zip. Here comes uh, Lakeside. That was Ken Powell. So right around midfield and uh, 45 yards on this pass completion here for the Lancers getting tripped up right in front of the goal line. And... Uh, Lakeside trying to punch it in. It's Caver with the touchdown toss there. And uh, Lakeside finally gets on the board. Now Arlington trying to answer here. It's Eric Barajas taking it to about the 20-yard line here. And that's going to set up this um, for Arlington. Javi! Yes, that's your guy, right? <laughs> and now it's number 24, I believe. Here it comes. Akili Thomas, or no, number two, Akili Thomas going in for the touchdown on that play there for Arlington. Not a lot of scoring, Jeff, in this game, but Arlington did do just enough. Here's an interception here by Jacob Christensen to seal the deal. 13 to 7 was the final score, so um, nice win for Arlington. In fact, they've had a couple nice victories here early on in the season well, now. Just think about it. Last week, Javi Moreno was playing soccer in Mexico City or La Michoacan or somewhere in, in Mexico. And today, he kicks a 58-yarder. That definitely has to be a record for the Lions. Yeah, good for him, man. And that was that was big time, 58 yards. I mean, that's college uh, NFL that style is, right there. big time. All right, let's see. Next up, Arroyo Valley taking on La Sierra. This was another Thursday night special. This was a game that went deep into the night. There was a pretty severe injury that happened during the game. We'll get to that in just a moment. Oh, look at those helmets. Is, are those the Eagles?
And now to the highlights. A little music montage, oh, Jeff, sorry, to, to get you all excited and pumped up for the highlights. Oh, man, they have a good helmet. That might be my favorite helmet in the IE. Hawks and Eagles. Uh, first quarter, Hawks facing third down. Big stop by the La Sierra front line there. Now it's La Sierra with the football, but the Hawks, Liddell Kemp. Keep an eye on Kemp. He wears number six for Royal Valley. Comes up with the interception and the nice return by Kemp as well. And uh, here comes a Royal Valley in business. But they would be forced to punt. Nice return by La Sierra on this. And unfortunately, Jeff, we, we have the La Sierra roster, but when we went to match it up, it's it's not accurate. So we don't know exactly who's who. I, I don't want to say the wrong name. It so was done number on three. purpose so, we can, so they will, it's hard to scout them. Oh. Maybe you might be on to something I'm here, Jeff. always on to something. Uh, Eagles with the ball, and uh, I believe that's their quarterback who's playing QB right now, Tristan Passo-Aqua. Passo-Aqua, I know yeah. the Passo-Aqua oh. family. And this was the play that delayed the game. It was almost a touchdown, and uh, number 15 not on the roster, so I don't want to speculate what his name was. I tried to find out today. Um, but it sound, from the initial report at the field, it, it, they were, I was being told it was a broken wrist. So we hope he's doing okay. It was about a 45 minute delay. They got back to the action. The Eagles trying to score on that drive because remember, they're right there on the doorstep. They were inside the five yard line. Uh, Arroyo Valley's Andrew Garcia, the sack there to turn them back a couple yards. Same drive now in the second quarter, and they finally get in. That is Montreal G. 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 The one like the letter? The G, yeah, like the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Montreal G. Uh, congratulated there by head coach Sean Moore. Later in the second quarter, Arroyo Valley's QB, Abel Ramos, finds Joaquin Morris for the TD. He was running. And uh, Not that makes it a 7-6 to six game. They go for the two-point conversion. And, Jeff, I guess in the big scheme of things, this is important because they get the two-point conversion here. That's Ronald Weathers. They go up 8-7. to seven. That would be the winning points because they win 14 to 7, the final score against La Sierra. So not a lot of scoring. A Royal Valley comes out on top, 14 to 7, uh, the final there. All right, Hemet taking on Liberty. The Liberty Bison off to a great start. Uh, the coaches over there, we love those guys. They got a they got a great thing going right now, Jeff. They have Coach Broach. Anytime Coach Broach is on the sidelines, you have a shot to win. Now you absolutely do. Let's go to those highlights. And uh, it was kind of tight early on between the what Bison is, and the Bulldogs. What is this? What are they doing? That, that's the big hallway walk to get out to the field, I man. They, they love the Bison. I love It's where I, my kids are going to go to school there. Hibbett actually led in this game 10-7, uh, and the Bison's Zach Velasco makes that catch. Catch goes in for the score. Liberty takes the lead 14 to 10 and they would really not look back in this game. Anthony Ruelas had himself a big game. So did Eddie Smith. All the usual names that you hear for Liberty football as uh, it was a tight game in the beginning in the first half and Liberty pulls away 49 to 20 the final score. So they roll big time against the Hemet Bulldogs. Although, like I said, it was, it was kind of close in the first half so credit to the Bulldogs for making things interesting against a, a very good Liberty team and Liberty needs to be in with those nice uniforms I'm serious yeah. next week I want everybody to, to who's watching this show I want you to t send me slide into my DMs is that what you say that's what they say uh, slide into my DMs I want to know who has the best uniforms in the area and you give them to me, and we're going to have a top five. We'll do that next week. Who's your front runner? She's off the top of your head. Liberty, I know you like Eisenhower. I, I, I do like uh, Ramona, even though they had the nurses' outfits for, for uh, one week. But this week, they had the nice uh, fatigues. They had a nice. Oh, the fatigue, yeah. yeah. Fatigue. I do so like they, those. But they had a the different camouflage, uniform. yeah. So they're, you know, I like they're clean, but I'll tell you what, La Sierra helmets were pretty nice. Who were the ones we saw last week that was all gold or was like. Was that a Royal Valley? Was that, it might have been a Royal Valley. It might have been. Just tell Your me. Your boy, who, Matt Howell. Yeah, just tell me what you guys want as far as the best. And I will tell you next week we'll have the best helmets of the first part of the season. Audio engineer uh, Kono is putting in a vote for the Cajon Cowboys. Man, uh, I can see him across on, the get window. Get out yeah. of here. But come on. Uh, we saw another know, one. What was the guys wearing earlier? Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Oregon Ducks at the I, like, I, like I will say this. As a 49er fan, it kind of pains me to say this, but I love the Ramona Rams look. With the, with the, Ram, the You know, the Ram uh, horns. I'm not a Rams fan. I like the Niners, but I do like Ramona's oh, look. Oh, so. I love Ramona more yeah. than anything in the world. Uh, I know you do. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> the Rancho Verde. Let's let's just jump to the highlights. Yeah, the so Rancho sorry. Verde uh, trying to stay undefeated on the season. They took their show on the road to La Quinta. And that is Dylan Riley, one of the top running backs in the Inland Empire. He's wearing number zero this year. That's Agent number. zero goes into the that's score. Not, that's not it's a an number. integer. It's it's an I don't know. It's, uh, he goes in for the touchdown there. Rancho Verde's defense flying around. Eric Zobalt, man, he, he loves defense. So you know at some point the Mustangs are going to crank it up on the defensive side. They did just that. Uh, the sack here, that is Tylen Allen, the sack there for the Mustangs. Now going to the air. It's going to be a Marion Orange with the touchdown strike. Oh, Orange, you're glad Rancho Verde has. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, big touchdown there for Rancho Verde. They would roll. Uh, here's another run by Riley. I don't think it was. Yeah, just a nice run. Uh, Rancho Verde rolls against La Quinta 40 to 13. So they are 3 and 0 on the season, Jeff. So last year, remember, they had a, a you know, um, a slow start to the season, we'll say it. A sluggish. They got to Ivy League play, and they, and they were in a battle with, with North and Orange Vista and Elsinore trying to win that Ivy League championship. Orange Vista won it, but uh, Rancho Verde really came on strong in league play, made it to the CIF semifinals, and uh, apparently that's carried over into this year because now they're 3-0 they're and to start the year. So when did the Zomal brothers play each other? Like, uh, I'd have to look it up, but I'm going to guess it's the last week of the season because that's what it was last year, remember? Yeah. If... Uh, if Orange Vista had, you know, if won, they won, but it would have been an outright title or a co-championship had Rancho Verde won. So, yeah, well, I would have, yeah. I would have thrown the game for my brothers. We could have been co-champs. Oh man, yeah, right. So everybody's happy, <laughs> right? Everyone, Mom's happy. She every, goes to both sides. Everyone's got exactly. a share of that championship. All right, uh, let's go back out to the desert right now. Ukaipa playing on the road at Shadow Hills. In fact, we saw Shadow Hills last week because they played Norda Vista, and Norda Vista blew them out, remember? Yes. Against Shadow Hills. This time, Ukaipa getting their shot at them. Jace Pastilli. Pastilli, the interception for the T-Birds. The Thunderbirds. And Pastilli takes it to the goal line. And uh, here comes Logan Barber. The touchdown run here for hashtag Yucktown, as they affectionately call it. There's the QB, Deese Turner on the keeper in for the touchdown. Um, Yukaipa wins. Not as big a margin as Norda Vista did the previous week, which was a blowout, but Yukaipa still wins. 21 14, the final score. So the T-Birds are 3 and 0 oh, uh, as they get past uh, Shadow Hills out in Indio. I met Dudley Moore once in Ukaipa at a basketball game. Dudley Moore, is he an actor? Yeah, he's dead. I mean, he was Arthur, but I, I met him. Oh, his, that's right. That's he, why I know the he name. He was going out with Susan Anton. She was a big, hot uh, 70s, like, model. But she was dating or lived with... Uh, Wait, who was? Oh, I'm probably going to go down a rabbit hole, but yeah. someone was talking about Susan Anton and the Calamesa Ukaipa area. Then she's from there. She went to Ukaipa. Going school. to all the big Ukaipa football games yeah, out there. So she would she would go to the game. She brought Dudley Moore once, and I was all excited to see Dudley Moore. Oh my gosh! All right, well. <laughs> As, as thrilling as this conversation is about Dudley Moore. Jason, let's go to the scoreboards. Uh, we got a couple more scoreboards to get to, and then we're also going to look ahead to week number three of the high school football season. Uh, Downey and Harupa Hills. Uh, Cedos Marina is a good dude, great coach, but they come up short for Harupa Hills, 30-23 to against Downey. Uh, highlights you saw earlier in the show, Ike. Finger! Respect the Ike mom. Yes! 28-7 to against Palm Springs tonight. Oh, our good buddy, Chris. Chris Chaddick, man, hammering Ontario tonight. Oh, San G. Can, can you be nice to Ontario? What did they do to you, <laughs> My man, 61 0. San G's 3 0. Wow. The G is back. Swaggy yeah. G, as they, they got call Edlund it. And, and Andy Martinez. Yeah, the whole Chaddick crew over there yeah. wearing goofy shirts. <laughs> Carter over Fontana, 43 to 7, the final there. Big win for the Lions. Bloomington uh, against Rubido, 40 24, the final there. We've got a couple more to run through. Patriot, 31 to 14 against Supa Dupa Harupa Valley. Coach. Uh, Fowler has them going on. They could cause some problems in the River yeah, Valley. You heard Dennis Pope. That River Valley is going to be a lot of fun um, as we get to league play in a couple of weeks still. Canyon Springs 27-21 against Citrus Hill tonight. The Cougars move to 2 and 1. Rancho Christian 14 to 13 against West Valley. Both these teams were undefeated going into the game. From what I understand, West Valley scored. They went for the two-point conversion and the win they did not 
get it. Final score, Rancho Christian wins by one. Uh, Paris falling on the road at Desert Hot Springs, 35-27. That's the first loss of the season for the Panthers there. Uh, the game that you just saw, Rancho Verde over La Quinta, 40-13, as uh, Coach Zilmalt has the Mustangs rolling right now. And uh, let's see, do we have any more? I think, oh yeah, Valley View against Yucca Valley. That hey, was a, Pete Smolin! Yeah, they're two and one. That was a comeback win for the Eagles. Valley View had to battle back in the second half uh, to get that win. Uh, Arrowhead Christian. Oh yeah, you know what? My wife texted me the score and I forgot to even tell all you guys. Oh, by the way, ACA won 40 to nothing. <laughs> uh, she texted me a lot earlier. 40 to nothing. Oh, ACA's three and oh. I know. They, How about they, that? They've had three good wins. Great wins. Yeah. Are they going to play Aquinas? They are. Is, Ooh, is Aquinas amazing. ready for the Eagles? I don't know. The mighty Eagles. The Eagles. The Eagles. <laughs> 40 to zero. Is that the last one, Jason? I, oh, oh, okay. Banning. Oh, oh man. Why, why would you do that to Desert <laughs> Chapel? I mean, you do that to a church in the desert? 62 to nothing? Hey, congrats. Uh, uh, congrats, Jake Niesel, the head football coach at Banning, right? First win as the head coach of the Banning Broncos. They beat a church in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> oh, then you're not. Oh, then you're going to like this one. Grace Brethren. Uh, they beat Santa Rosa Academy. Great. Grace, your, your former she, school. Wait, Grace, she died 30 years ago. Santa Rosa Academy. Go that's your. That's. Oh, I was the coach. And all the and all the Jeff Gora coaching <laughs> stops. Santa Rosa Academy is my favorite. Oh yeah, I never <laughs> actually coached. I got you. You hired me to to join you, so I quit. <laughs> I was a quitter. <laughs> you never got to do an actual game. Okay, so that is week two. We have That's all the scores and highlights that we have here. But let's quickly, Jeff, take a look uh, at the upcoming week. And uh, we'll do start. Do we have to? There's a lot of games there, going on. There is a lot of games. Especially in, the, in non-league play, it gets really, really busy. Oh, this is a good one. Polly versus King. This is the Riverside TV game, right? Yeah, Pauly I think, versus I think King. it is. I, I believe we're on that call. And nobody likes Polly. So King, <laughs> King's playing pretty well. So this will be a good one. I love, I yeah. love going over to Polly and seeing Jim Vaughn and. Pa Polly could have won Hansen. tonight against Sultana. They could have won, and we saw that decisive win by King against Ramona. So but, that could be interesting. But guess what? They didn't win. They did win. They no. didn't win, and they've got a tough King uh, game next week. You have Jerron Gilbert. Can't wait to see that guy. He jumps out of pools. If you invite him over to your, your house, he'll jump out of your pool. Flat-footed. And keep an eye on uh, Sam Green of King, right? Number 15. Sam Green, son of Bob yeah. Green, played at Cal, <clears throat> was a great player. All right, so you and Ghazal Hassan on the call next week, right? And me and somebody. I'm sure it'll be Ghazal Friday or night. Nick Rice or you or... JR. JR Ibarra. He's in the mix. We had a new person today. I don't know her name. She was, <laughs> she was, she was cool. Peyton. Her name was Peyton... Peyton something. She was cool, though. Baby? Oh, she, she was Peyton. She was a young kid. She was a sideline reporter with J.R. Ibarra. <laughs> Peyton something. I don't. I don't remember her name. Peyton Beatty. Beatty. Peyton Beatty. She did a yeah. great job. I don't. She was. She was wonderful. She. She goes to MSJC. By the way. She does. Yeah. Uh, she looked like she was about yeah. twelve. <laughs> <laughs> She yes, Jason, great. please yes, get us out of here. Let's let's go to the scoreboard. All right. We're all very tired and hungry at this point of the night. <laughs> no. Uh, North against Roosevelt. That's man, that's gonna be tough for the Huskies. Uh, even though Roosevelt lost tonight against Oaks Christian, they're, they're still really good. That's gonna be a tough battle. That's a Thursday night special. Lakeside against Hillcrest. Man, Travis Carter has got to get those guys regrouped and focus again after a tough loss against Grand Terrace I tonight. I think there is a chance we're gonna have that game next week. Oh, are you? Ooh, I believe interesting. La Sierra will take on Indian Springs. We'll see if the Eagles can get their first win of the season. Arlington going on the road to Buena Park. Knott's Berry Farm. Maybe oh, they that's can, right. Maybe they can go to Knott's Berry Farm after they beat them. After they a win. Yeah. A, win a win is a they win. They go to Knott's Scary Farm. Uh, Ramona against Palm Springs. In fact, we just saw Palm Springs tonight falling to Eisenhower. We'll see what Ram High can do <laughs> that's out, a, that's out a there win. in the desert. That's a win for Ramona. Hey, we got a couple teams out in the desert. Norda Vista will play out in the Coachella Valley. They will take on the Rattlers from Rancho Mirage. Wait, Rattlers? Yeah, and then another one in the desert, Notre Dame, playing in that parochial rivalry game against Xavier Prep. We just saw uh, Xavier Prep lose to Aquinas. Where's tonight. Xavier Prep? Palm Desert. Okay, what's their uh, of course. name? The Saints. Saints, okay. Come on, man. CSDR taking on Sage Hill. You know where Sage Hill, we were just talking about this. Uh, Newport Beach, right? Newport Beach, yeah. but you know, it makes me think of like a tumbleweed on a mountain. Sage Hill. There you go. <laughs> uh, so those are the uh, games involving Riverside schools come uh, next week. And again, Riverside Polly against King is the Riverside TV game of the week.
I think that's it, Jason. That's it, right? No. That's uh, we Keep have. It going. We, we need more. No, 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 no. Let's go to one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we have blown out all the highlights and scores that we have. We appreciate you staying up late with us, even. The Kaiser Cat crew who keeps blowing up our phones. I'm going to drive over to there. I'm going to put my <laughs> foot on their necks, and then I'm going to go home, and then I'm, I'm going to sleep very comfortably. <laughs> Billy Cardosi, don't lose next week. <laughs> For Jeff Gorham uh, and the entire Riverside TV team behind the scenes, led by the one and only Scott Brocious, not the World Series hero for the Yankees, but the other Scott Brocious uh, here at Riverside TV. Jeff, we'll be back here next week, right? Uh, yeah, late. Yeah, we'll be here every, yeah, every yeah. Week. We'll be here next week uh, with all your week three high school football scores, highlights, and maybe some interviews as well. Huh? Oh, yeah, we'll have somebody in the in studio. And don't forget the coach's perspective Monday. The best show on your TV. Your second favorite yeah, show on TV. You know, yeah, Pep Fernandez <laughs> goes on my show this week, and he, he's talking about the Pep rally. He goes, you know, that's the best show that's on the best TV. Show. The best it's show on the, TV. He's sitting right next to me. Well, your you show what. is second best. No, it's, my it's, show's the best. It's the coach's perspective here on Riverside TV. It's every Monday. <laughs> my name is Pep Fernandez. We'll see you next Friday night on the Friday Night Pep Rally on Riverside TV. <laughs>